talk about uh, some open data and some app ideas, right? Yeah, second to a browser. Oh, uh, Windows W. Windows W. Okay. The Windows key is next to the control key. Oh, okay. Well, no, no Windows. Okay. Windows W. Just give me a second. Just to relate it to my life. Oh, sure. <laughs> can you see this now? Uh, we can see, yeah. Do you have two windows going on? Yeah, I have two screens. Can I make this one primer? Uh, uh, just uh, drag it over to the right. Okay. Oh. Sure. Well, I'll start here. Okay, um, that's my name, um, Annette. and I joined the Park District about 15 years ago, and um, I was brought over to, it was right during the dot-com boom, and things were starting to kind of tail off, and I had a headhunter come after me for this job. I, I don't think anybody wanted it at the time, but uh, it wasn't a cool job. But um, I had kids, and it had insurance, and it looked good to me, so I... I took the job, and my job was to basically build online registration and um, the website and online registration. So I, the first iteration, um, I have some programming skills. I built the first iteration using, uh, then it was called Alire Cold Fusion. That was Adobe Cold Fusion. And, um, and I used SQL Server. And... Um, so I kind of share my how I got to that point because maybe some of you I didn't come from a technical technical background. I was when I moved to Chicago I was workshopping a uh, musical theater piece um, with a man named Michael Doug <coughs> Michael Butler who produced it. And uh, but there's only I think there's only two three people that make money in musical theater. So <laughs> um, and I always use computers and. Um, I joined a networking group, which was called the Association for Multimedia Communications. Met in the Harold Washington Library, and the software we, we were all into then was called was Mac, Macromedia Director, which became Shockwave. So, and, and, and all you could do back then was like, uh, you know, uh, kids' books where you go from page to page and you click on something and the draft would hop, and so that's about where we were then. And, I, I, I'm, this is going somewhere, I promise. But, so <laughs> I joined the organization because it was a networking group, and our annual fundraiser was at Park West. And at Park West, there was a, a our main presenter was a guy named Dave Schwarzek. He had a company called Streams Online Media, and he presented the browser. And there was this guy named Mark Andreessen that was building Netscape. And when I saw that, um, I said to myself, there was the printing press, and there's this. And so I used that as an opportunity to reinvent myself. And that's how I, I got into this. So I, I look kind of old for a web guy. But, um, uh, so, um, so when I joined the, the, the park district, um, I was given a, um, a sunbox. And it had the Oracle iStore on it, they called it at that time. I, I don't think it ever ran. And we fought with it for about a year. And then when my my boss was out of town, um, I, I built online registration like in two weeks. And when he came back, I didn't say anything. And when he came back, you know, it worked fine. So wow, it's working great. I said, yeah. It was, it was like six months before anyone discovered what I had done. <laughs> so I, I, I've, I've sort of been a, a rogue operator in this environment. Um, my most recent rogue uh, operation was I created cpdbeaches.com. And um, the, the, the problem was, because it's very sort of entrenched, you know, world government, bureaucracy, and people trying to control things. And so um, 
we, we got a grant from the EPA, and what the EPA wanted was live water quality, you know, water quality monitoring. So that we've got like uh, buoys floating in the water, and we've got weather stations. And like one uh, once an hour, those uh, devices make a three G phone call to uh, to the mothership, and um, basically that creates this RSS file. And then I was importing. Uh, we were getting live. Well, hourly beach, you know, weather, bacteria, and um, well, that was the mandate. That was the grant we got from the EPA. So I looked at my setup and I said, "There's no way I can make this work with my main vendor, and because um, I can't touch the code, I can't get in and make the changes. I'm constantly asking Emily to talk to Fred to talk to. I'm just trying to share experience there. So to get something done, it would take a week. You know. So I basically. Uh, took the in the first iteration, I just took the uh, uh, the JavaScript frame, and stuck it on a different house, imported everything, and it looked just like the same website. And I, I think it was about three or four months into that when someone said, "Hey, it doesn't say Chicago Park District that got up there." And and um, but what I was, I just had to do that to get to get the job done. I, I wish I could switch. Can I go to this screen? Can maybe just drag it over? What? Yeah, I think if you drag the mouse over to the right, you said. Yeah. I mean, just skip this browser. Oh, there so you go. Okay. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, so now, now your mouse is on that one. Yeah, there you go. Awesome. Do you want to keep that one open and just open up a new tab, maybe? So that, that were, there was a little compromise. I hired a designer, but the organization decided we had to have the, the main banner up there at the top. So it's beyond my control. <laughs> but during um, the during the last summer, all of these they're all green now because the site's basically sleeping. But um, each lifeguards have laptops where they can change the flags, and they go from green to yellow to red. And I'm I'm going to offer that data publicly when it goes live again as a JSON feed. So um, if we. I'll come on those beaches for me. Yes, good. Mm -hmm. um, so this is built with Twitter Bootstrap uh, version two. That was my decision also. Um, But I'm, I'm pretty sure the, I'm pretty sure that's wrong because the weather, the buoys are not in. But this was every hour that, that updates the water temperature and the wind, the wind direction. Um, so this site's built using the. Adobe Cold Fusion 10 and SQL Server. Um, I've, I've been uh, attending classes on MongoDB. We're very interested in that. And uh, using Node.js using Node and uh, Mongo instead of uh, Cold Fusion and SQL Server. Although it's, it's a good tool set. Um, let me go back to this. Can I get back to there? Um, I may just uh, want to go back on the tab that you're on. Okay. And then you use the back. This one? Uh, yeah. Oh, cool. Okay, well, that's about me. And then this is the park district. Um, we're an independent incorporated taxing district. Uh, we're aligned on your property tax bill. Not a very big one. 
We have over 500 parks, and we originally established to preserve natural areas within the city. And our seal says Ortis in Uve, which is a city in a garden. Uh, what do we do? Uh, we take over the property, we mow the lawns, we have programs, we have movies in the park, we maintain the harbors and the beaches. Um, on our property, a uh, uh, soldier field, shed aquarium, uh, the Adler Planetarium, all those are in Burham Park, and uh, Lincoln Park Zoo, Art Institute, Museum of Science and Industry, the harbors. Um, so, um, the challenge that I'm, I have right now is basically to move, to move into this, new, what, what I'm, our, our website right now is currently, it looks like a very sort of traditional static website from 10 years ago. And I, um, the reason, my goal is to move our, our website more into a, uh, um, you know, a web-centric uh, application with some Web3 components. You know, I, I, I want to see, wherever I am, I see the map, I see myself. Yeah, uh, I have kids, I see playgrounds. Um, so, you know, customize it to the user. It's my water over there? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um, What's the data set? What's your next slide? The data set. Data so silos. interesting. The next slide you have. Okay, data silos. Um, Thanks. But one, of the, one of the challenges, and I think this is true for uh, a lot of organizations, is we have all these different systems that don't work each other. And so we have our program registration, which um, is hosted on a, on a service a software, uh, Active.com. Um, the only way I get to that data is I have to download the whole database um, and restore it on our, on our network. Okay. And um, we really need a glass of water. There's one. I think Derek's getting one. Oh. It's empty. It's empty. That's okay. A lot of people. Oh, thanks. Okay. Uh, we start our websites on, you know, with one vendor, and I, I can access the data via um, an XML file. It gives me all the data, but it's just, it's just a dump of the data. And then I was uh, the, the work order system. I use these three examples uh, internally. I can get to that data via like a Oracle driver, so I can. And the reason I brought these these three examples was. Um, you, you, the example would be uh, a baseball diamond in Grant Park. In our program registration, you could register for a class at that at that diamond. If you went to Google and looked at that diamond, it would say um, it would say like baseball diamond one. Maybe Google gave it that name. If you looked at our program registration, it might say Northeast uh, baseball diamond. In our web CMS, it might say um, you know, Mike Ditka diamond or something. You know, I mean, it might have an honor in him. And then our work order system, it, it might not even call it a baseball diamond. It might call it something else. And and there's no, the primary keys are all different. So, moving forward, I have my new web application that I envision, my, my mobile device, my mobile app. Um, and I'm, I'm registered for, at this baseball diamond for a program at the baseball diamond. I'm at the baseball diamond, and I notice there's something wrong 
you know, there's a hole in the fence or something. And I want to I want to report that uh, issue to the to, to the park district. Well, unless the machines all are talking, on, you know, have the same identifiers. Um, <coughs> plus, if if I if I unify the uh, the data, the application could know that they were talking about that baseball diamond because that's where they are. And um, but that's where we need to be is we need to be able then to um, here's a problem with this that ends up in our work order system. Someone set out to fix it. Right now. Um, I mean, you probably would believe it, but right now there could be five, six, seven different messages generated um, trying to get that uh, something fixed. They could be coming through our websites or our contact form. They could be putting something at uh, Facebook. They could be putting something at Twitter. Um, they could be calling. And, and where, where this all leads to is like integrated uh, CRM too. But we. We, we don't know who our people are. We, we can't identify a customer as a customer. Um, we can't identify our objects. Um, and so that's, that's, where, that's, where the, that's the problem. Uh, that's where we are right now. And uh, we're actually looking at um, some different systems, one of them being um, Google Maps Engine Enterprise, mm -hmm. which is like a CMS for geospatial data. The idea there would be we need like a, a system of registry for our objects, one place, so we can identify. We have we have hundreds of thousands of things, and um, it's something I've been pushing for for several years. But I, I think we're reaching the pain point now where uh, we make we, we may go that way. Isn't the Vinci has also published some data on the data portal with all these sort of park district assets? Yeah. And, and I would assume that that data set has the same issue, right? That it's got, it's one sort of version of um, yeah. this identification system, one. one right, like we're using, we're using a couple, of, we're, we're hooked up to the city GIS system. Yeah. But at the same time, uh, we're producing maps in Google Earth with KML files, and we're, you know, and we're publishing those to the city portal via spreadsheet. Right. right. That's so, how almost everything is published to the yeah. data portal by flat file. Right? So that's another one of my goals through the, um, like creating sort of a cloud-based uh, geospatial CMS, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. yeah. would, that would also give uh, other agencies like the city the ability to to feed off of our data. Mm -hmm. um, so there's there's a lot of there's a lot of challenges. Mm -hmm. um, um, so, what I was talking to Juan about uh -huh. yeah. was um, rather than, um, and I, I have high level support for this, but rather than sort of battling what we've got, I, I think the thing to do is just to start over. And uh, so I, I obtained the, the domain name um, Chai Parks, I which I think is better than Chicago Park District. Um, and and what I envi I envision that as as being a um, uh, you know map centric mobile first mm -hmm. open source mm -hmm. um, sort of to tile as tile data together and and give the public something that they can really use. Mm -hmm. um, so. I don't know where I'm going to make a presentation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, so can you maybe elaborate a little bit on that idea? So, do you are you looking for specifically ideas about what would make that app experience better or good for you know all, all a wide range of Chicagoans? Are you looking for sort of technical help to sort of figure out the best um, way to implement it? I mean, it sounds like. I, honestly, if you're on a really good track already using I mean, I use Twitter Bootstrap all the time. Mm -hmm. I guess you just call it Bootstrap one. Really, really uh, and yeah, Mongo is a really popular uh, platform for doing mapping, especially storing geospatial data. Uh, Nick, right behind you, knows something about that. <laughs> Me? Oh, look, the guy. Are you both named Nick? Yes. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Um, so, you know, there's, uh, I think, from my experience making apps, the, the real question is not the technology we use, but what's the, what do you want to have this thing do, right? Well, I think at first, so I, what's the side that is already up, not doing it? 
Um, well, what's a site? Well, I like to say we have multiple sites. Mm -hmm. um, we, we have now sort of um, now that we, we, we're all like about at session state. We're not like uh, we, we don't remember who you are. We might ask you to log in. You might have to sign in six or seven different times to do different things at the park district. Right, yeah. I mean, we, we probably should go to OAuth or something like yeah, that. Yeah, right. Um, <coughs> and I have a question. Yeah. Does the park district have an advisory council? That, especially with the program for kids, do you have like a parent council of parents who give advice on this stuff? Because I feel like, uh, especially the parents who use the registration process, would yeah, have a lot they're going to have a lot of demands and kind of ideas and almost a to-do list for you. No, you beat up a lot. <laughs> but do you do they beat you up in a formal way? Or <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would beat up by the checkers of Trader Joe's. You know. Because maybe by organizing those Trader Joe's parents and yeah. bringing them in a central place to beat you up and have someone <laughs> take notes on what they're beating up about to help. Kind they're not constructed beating. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's okay. Judo, judo type move. Judo <laughs> constructed beating up into your kind of web design priorities. Mm -hmm. yeah. The data exists mm -hmm. already. Which is like, if there's digital desire lines out there, um, in groups like the Neighborhood Parents Network, mm -hmm. there's a lot of very detailed conversations about the Chicago Park District experience for registration especially. Mm -hmm. And you get all your different use cases in there. Like, well, I have Nature twins. Networks, too. I have twins. I have four kids. I yeah. have, you know, and so you're seeing all these different problems these parents are Really now that's a very specific set of parents that can afford a neighborhood yeah. network uh, membership. So then there's also you've got um, community alliances like the Logan Neighborhood Alliance, yeah. where they've got parents that can easily give you feedback. And then people who use walkups because they've just given up on. Well, our our former. System which, which I helped build by the way when it worked um, was we, we we were way ahead of our times. So we had like a single page. We called it our program browser, and it was was one page, and it was all AJAX, and the UI was based on the iPod. And um, but after that, we kind of well, it, we, the reason we left that was simply because our vendor went into a different business. They 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 were uh, they went into uh, Drupal. Um, you know, content management. They want they want to do e-commerce. So. so we basically, hey, it was you know, we had to find a new vendor, and, and uh, I'm I'm not happy at all with our uh, uh, registration vendor active. It's it's, uh, it's ten year old technology, it's, um, and there's nothing to do about it. Yeah. 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 And yeah, question as a former government employee myself, um, I look at a slide like this and I wonder how much of the challenges that you have are bureaucratic versus, I mean, to, to make data that's so disjoint public or restart it, um, I mean. Well, I think one of the, you know, the story of the emperor's new clothes, you know, where everyone's saying the king has clothes and all that. <laughs> A lot of it, there's a lot of people that say they have data, and there isn't any data there. There is, yeah. it's, uh, so it's, uh, so, and, and so you really can't blame them either. It's sort of, it's not their fault. It's just the way. But is that something that, you know, starting, starting over, I mean, is that something, like, within the agility of the, the park district? It, you know, is it something that is feasible? Well, I, I, I think I, I gained some, um, Trust from the high level when I read the beaches page because okay. what you don't see there is that it, it's in Twitter and these guys have been asking for mobile for a long time and so all of a sudden my site pops up and it's oh it's mobile it works and I'm like oh look that's not supposed to work <laughs> and uh, so everyone was like well we've been asking these other people to do this for years and you know and stayed up all night and did it so um, uh, so that's that's kind of my um, as Juan says, uh, demo, not memo. Right, yeah. So it's just like, you know, let me show you. Mm -hmm. And um, So that's your strategy now. It's just sort of maybe prototype something at this checkparks.com website to show what's possible. And then it is hopefully it'll yeah, be adopted 
if it's successful. And, and what I want to, I can't do anything about the programs. Really. I can bring the data over, right. but I can't change that experience. But what I, what I can do is uh, is the uh, you know walk before you run thing with the application. It doesn't have to be very. I think it would be so much better, and it could be so simple. Mm -hmm. It's like divide, divide the like I've been uh, looking at. Um, what's the content when you change I mean, you know, someone is looking at a senior page, so you start showing them senior dancing. Mm -hmm. um, but there's just a few simple things we could we could do. Um, specific content, that's what I'm and. Um, but it, just a simple map application is like, hell, oh, I'm here, I have kids, show me playgrounds. Mm -hmm. Just break it down into <coughs> five or six slices yeah, and, and get that right. And mm -hmm. then, then go from there. That's mm -hmm. what I think, that's what I would do. Yeah, I can remember the, on the Parks District page, there's actually pretty good, rich, detailed pages on each of the parks. Mm -hmm. And something that, what if you just had, you don't have to re reproduce that work, right? What if you just had, is sort of tool for sending you to the right place based on some criteria. I got kids and I'm here. And then it knows the list of the parks and it says, okay, you need this park. And then it just boots you to that page, right? Is that that sounds like that alone might be an app in itself that's worth making, yeah, I, right? I think the, the data is I think it's designed in sort of a way to disguise the fact that there isn't a lot of that. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you really look at it. I mean, like if you select tennis sports. Mm -hmm. It'll send you to a list of parts of tennis courts, and then it, and then down the bottom will say tennis court. And you click on that, and it takes you back to the list of tennis courts. <laughs> but you've never seen, you've never seen a picture of a tennis court. You've never. Um, so I, I don't know, um, another thought I had was, um, it's like with our program. It's like if you're talking about hockey, well, there's all kinds of content about hockey that we could link to and. Um, we could begin to connect some of our, our stuff up with other stuff. And, mm -hmm. okay. Do you think there's any possibility that, uh, that some of these uh, backhand APIs might get exposed? Because that would make, I mean, if, if there was a, if you had an API kind of like the city has moved to having a writable open 311 API, then right. You would be able to accept this problem, right? Because it's like you know, some of these vendors' problems. You know, there really is an opportunity to make something better, yeah. and someone from this community could do that without having to ask for permission from a bunch of people. Is there any kind of movement on, on exposing some uh, some more of these backend endpoints? You know, if I could, if I even to use a computer, <laughs> I'm just going. This is this is an innocent fancy, but. Okay, that's the start of it. So I have one. Um, I promise there will be something here. There's almost something there by tonight. But um, but this is our Park District website data. It's available right now. Okay. It's all the descriptions, history. Mm -hmm. It has the, the center point. Right. Um, I should rebuild it so much. So what do you think about like using the possibility that you can that you could have a writing API instead of just uh, instead of in addition to the reading API? Yeah, so but someone could with this data right there build our website. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm I'm looking at uh, I've got a I've got an account at Mongo Lab. Uh -huh. com. And that's one way I could work with, uh, it's not a, a fully functional API, but you can use REST right. and, uh, and and Mongo operators in the URL string. So you could say, you know, give me all the, you could search for information within that database. And I think everyone here is like kind of nodding and sympathizing with you, but we can't, there's not, there doesn't sound like a lot of ways that we can really help you right now, you know? I mean, we can, like, I mean, I think that Chicago Beaches is actually out. I was blown away by the Marvel site. I'm really glad that the, the Park District has someone uh, like you working with you. I'm working with them. You know, I think that, like, having more, I mean, some of the, one of the main ways that you can sell kind of bad technology 
and government is having better technologies than government, so it's, it's, it's hard to see a product like that. But if you want to leverage this community, you, there needs to be, uh, you need to make some endpoints for us to, to, to help you. You know, so something, if there's that, if the application process is broken and you don't think that's what you can fix internally, maybe one thing to do is like, well, maybe we can additionally write, maybe there's a way, an opportunity here to, to have uh, an application process be something that other people who have, who sign up for a key you know, or whatever, uh, can also write to, and then that's something that some, like someone in this community can then, that just being us open the door for actually people uh, being able to help you and leverage the community interest. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, that I, that I can get uh, a relationship with other developers where perhaps they can say, here's the data I want, here's like how I want it structured, and, and I'll see if I can get it. Okay, cool. Um, and just be you know, really open about that. I'll tell you if I can. This is yeah, this is exciting. I know you have your vendor for registration. Do they? Do they? Is there a feedback loop there? Do they give you data on wait lists or people who haven't been able to get into their class of choice? The only reason why I ask is I'm one of the users. <laughs> And I, it always it never fails to amaze me how um, there doesn't seem to be changes in the schedule, even when among parents were like, man, you know, all of the great gymnastics courses are scheduled before school is even out. You know, or before school ends at the end of the day. So I can't get my kid from school to this gym or whatever okay. class. And we don't know if anyone's. We have a mind mixer site that I know people read it. I know that. You see that? It's, uh -huh. If you go to our webpage, it's one of the panels. There's a mind mixer site. Mind mixer, mm -hmm. and that's for uh, so it's sort of like yeah. community feedback on yeah. anything. Yeah, and, and it works. I mean, I, people complain about things. I like it gets back to me. So. Okay. <laughs> when, it, when you click on like, wait list or you put something in your wish list or whatever, I don't know if that feedback ever gets back to you. Know, like, <laughs> How many it just doesn't. Class. It doesn't get to me. Can you bring your vendor in for one of these nights? Yeah. It sounds like they need to talk for you. They're in Vancouver. Stephen, you have a question. Yeah. And is the is this so registration for programs opens such and such a date? Is that data fixed, or does it change after the registration opens? It, it's supposed to be fixed. Okay, so would it be possible to have distribute that data, and someone could use that data to create an alternative program browser, and then if there was a permalink system in your registration, someone could then help the user find the program they want, and then bump them over to the actual sign up. Um, yeah, and, and so then they don't have to go through whatever vendor process you have right. until it comes time to type in registration details. That's what's going to go right there. I, I really, I really do have all of it. I just no, it's, um, <laughs> it's going to be a JSON file. And it's, it's all uh, alpha sorted by the parks and all park information, and it has like a nested uh, array of documents <laughs> to, the, to the programs underneath each park. That's what I think if. If, if I put some commenting on here, you, you, you mm -hmm. could tell me what you wanted. Mm -hmm. Is there any breakout by ADA requirements? Um, not not in not in the database, but I've i doing some data mining, so you know I look for I've been incorporated that yet. If I see ADA, then I mark it. As, mm -hmm. So the, the yeah. actual yeah. actual when, when it just says ADA, I understand. That's good. But what about, like, one guy's blind and one guy can't, uh, well, that's can't yeah. walk. They're, 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 those are different ADA requirements, and how does the park, uh, hey, how does the park get used by these people? Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know what, I don't even know what that page looks like to someone who's blind. I, that's, that's something I need to do. <laughs> Well, would that be a good 
sort of stopping point, unless you have anything else to add. I think a great um, thing you can do is sort of have a follow-up group, sort of breakout group. This is sort of what we do uh, for the second half of that hack night. Anyways, since that seems, if you're willing to stick around, Ed, sure. um, and, and talk about some of these things in more detail. Um, but thanks, Ed, for, for presenting. Thank you.